So hello everyone and welcome. My name's Gordon Young. I'm the director of the Institute of Applied Psychology. And I've got Dr. Stephen Gilligan here today. And Steve is someone that I respect enormously. Uh, we recently had him here in Australia running a 12 day training. Uh, Stephen got his, his doctorate from Stanford University. He worked with the famous hypnosis lab there. If you uh, look him up, you'll see that he's in the top tier of psychologists uh, on the planet, basically. Uh, if you uh, look up uh, the most uh, significant conferences in the world, uh, like the Evolution of the Psychotherapy Conference, Stephen is in the inner circle of lead trainers, and he spends most of his time going around the world teaching his generative trance uh, work, something that he created. He was a student of the legendary Milton Erickson. And together with Robert Diltz, he has created something called generative coaching. And I'd just like to welcome Steve. Gordon, hi, good to be here. Good to see you again. Yeah, it was only a short time, what, six or seven weeks that I was down in beautiful Sydney for two wonderful weeks. And, you know, there was sort of little rumblings on the edges about the virus, but wow, a lot has happened since then. Yeah, you you literally got out just before it all really hit the wall. Well, I, I actually, after I left Australia, I came home, went to New York City and uh, barely got out of New York City. So yeah, yeah it's, a, it's an extraordinary sh shift of events that no nobody um, really could have possibly anticipated in terms of how it would be so devastating for globally, really. Yeah. And, and you know, there's a lot of people making suggestions of how we deal with it. Domestic violence is up. Uh, depression and anxiety is up. You know, the Australian government is pumping a fair bit of money into mental health right now because there is that concern. How do we protect people? You know, we have over 1.5 mil million people lost their job a couple of weeks ago here in Australia. They're expecting maybe 5 million to be unemployed in the next yeah. few weeks. 5 million out of a population of 23 million. Um, wow. So there's a lot of uncertainty. No one knows when this ends. You know, we're all, we're, we've got a large, large proportion, apart from uh, essential services, in lockdown. The schools are closed. Sure. So the entire country is closed. The question then becomes, people are at home. In some cases, they're concerned about their finances. This is something that you couldn't anticipate. You, you, you're going along happily, you've got a career, you've got a job, you, you know, you've got your life, and then this happens. And in many cases, if you've just started a business, you may have lost everything in just these or few years. you've had a business for 30 years, you may have lost everything. Exactly. You know, uh, and, and so there's a lot of advice about the, out there about what to do, you know, how to manage this. But I'd really like to hear what a real expert would suggest. So given the crisis, what do you suggest people do to manage this so that they actually come out of this maybe stronger, maybe using this as a pivot point in their life? Because it comes down to interpretation. How do you, how do you use this? Well, it comes down to meaning and then how you use that meaning to organize your response to, you know, what, what clearly is the, the most devastating event or set of events that have ever occurred in most of our lives before. Uh, you start with the easy questions. Um, you know, uh, we, we've all been struggling with that question. And one, you know, one thing I can say from working with people who have gone through you know, major life changes, traumas, uh, all sorts of setbacks for, you know, it's been the, the work that I've done for over 40 years, is this, this simple idea, most of the time, 
we get along with just our sort of normal way of dealing with things. And that works most of the time just fine. When we run into these very significant life events, it disrupts our sort of normal way of thinking and acting. And it disrupts it because we need to find some, some new way of thinking about ourselves and the world and how we experience things and how we respond to things. That disruption um, creates this frozen stress state. Okay? That stress means that your foot's going on the accelerator of the car uh, because you need action. What am I gonna do? Uh, what the heck's happening? And your hand is on the emergency brake at the same time um, because you're shocked, you're afraid, you don't know what to do. Um, your attention is sort of splintered in, in many directions. And, and that sort of double effect of speeding up while you pull the emergency brake, that's what trauma is. But that's also what a common underlying state of stress is. And one thing we know about stress, you cannot make good positive decisions. You cannot think clearly. You cannot make creative, decisive new actions while you're in the stress state. Okay? It's really important to know that. So, so if we were to think about this in terms of a couple steps, the first step is pull, pull the car to the side of the road. You know, stop trying to fix things. You, you, you need to take a little break. You need to pull that car off. The, you've gotten a little crash. Take a break. Find a way to get back to your, your positive sense of self. That's the work that we do. I know that the, the work that you do is all about creating resources for people, how to do that. So people need to know how to do that. They can check out your work. They can check out my work. But the first thing is get a positive connection back to yourself. Because anything you do, anything you think while you're in this stress state is going to make things worse. Mm -hmm. Have a sense when you're assessing the damage, if you will, uh, what you need to take care of with yourself first. You know, often say you know to people, remember when you're sitting in an airplane, and who knows? I I I live on airplanes, but who knows the next time I'm going to be on an airplane? Um, remember when the flight attendant says, in the in the case of an emergency these oxygen masks will come down that will be released and put it on yourself first. Now, if you're a, a parent like I am, like you are, that sounds counterintuitive. You know, you would think I, I need to give the oxygen mask to my child first. But it makes sense when you think about it. If you're not having a good connection to yourself, you can't help anybody. So pull off to the side of the road, find a way to get that positive connection with yourself, find a way to assess the damage and do whatever you need to do to be kind and caring and honest with yourself about what happened, what do I need to do? That's the first. Second, you need to use this connection to get back into the world. This trauma that happened, this catastrophe that happened is still happening, is something that we're struggling with, you know, at, at a global level. If you try to figure it out with just you as an individual, the wave is, gonna, is going to drown you. You cannot do this on your own. I've noticed, um, I, I see a lot of people who, who are speaking out, uh, really talk about this, that in order to begin to get better, after you've got the connection to yourself, come out into the world and do something helpful to others. I notice every time I do something like this, you know, just giving a few suggestions or 
doing outreach to people, I feel better. I feel that I could, my life has value. I can get outside of my own worries. I can get outside of this isolation. You know, it's not just uh, social isolation. And I can begin, begin to feel positive again. Then you can begin to think on, on that. What do I need to do new in my life to, to make positive use of these situations? Nobody would ever choose these circumstances, but they're given to us sometimes. This is an extreme, extreme version. So once you have that connection to yourself, that you, you can feel good with yourself, and then you make that connection to be helpful to others, your family, your children, your community, then you can begin to say, what I had, is no longer available, there's no turning back. How can I take advantage of this? And again, you have to be in a relaxed state to have any sort of positive answer to these questions. You, know, you might say, well, easier said than done. That's where the work that Gordon, you and I have, have spent our professional careers developing. That's where I think we can offer something that has value to help people find their way out of their stress, find a positive connection, make a commitment to positive action, be helpful to others. Then you can start asking that question, what do I need to do to reorganize my professional life? What do I need to do to take action? It's devastating. The answer may not be immediately forthcoming. Sometimes you may feel, I can't even consider that. I am advising people these days, starting with myself, mm -hmm. is allow yourself maybe 20% of each day to just feel helpless and falling apart. You know, it, it's just unavoidable at this time. So if we try to keep it together and try to just have a positive attitude, we, we probably won't be able to do it. So by saying, okay, maybe 20% of the day, I just feel overwhelmed. I just got to pull the car over to the side, let myself fall apart, be kind to myself, don't fight it, and then get back on the road again. So these are, you know, just, just a few of the things, but I think um, that we can do to really um, create something positive out of this horrible, horrible event. Um, so I, I think we can do it. And I, I see a tremendous um, outpouring from so many people. Uh, about being helpful to people, about talking about, you know, about, about talking creatively, about people coming together. And of course, there are notable counter exceptions, I'm not going to name names. But this is our chance. You know, all the values that we hold, all the people that we love, all the education and training that we have made, this is our chance. To, to really be able to make positive use of it. And you can do this, you can do this. Yeah, and, and I know some people are just getting really busy. And <laughs> uh, as you were talking there, I'm thinking, yeah, in some ways for some people getting really busy and getting obsessively positive is actually still crash date. It's actually totally. still a stress date. Totally. And it looks like they're doing something else. But I really like that idea of, and it's something I, I've taught and I've kind of forgotten myself, is just allow yourself to have your moments. That you're human. If you think about it in one context, you know, like if you're financially strapped, think, if you think about it, let yourself have it. Rather than deny it, let yourself have it. And then have your moment. That will, that'll have its time. And then... What can I do? And, uh, you know, 
you and I both teach this idea that there's way more resource available to you, either internally or externally, than we're likely to access when we're in a stressed state. Yeah, and you know, sometimes people say, well, you have all the, everything you need already inside. And I've always thought, not quite. Mm. A lot of times we come to these places in our lives where we have to grow something new, that we have to go beyond what, what we, who we were before this time. Uh, I think that's great, personally. You know, and, and you, know, you and I are, are both really busy people. I was on the road 230 days last year. And you know, I, I heard myself say, and like a lot of people, oh, okay, I'm gonna be home for a while, be able to read those books and get some rest. And I think I'm busier than ever, partly because there's a need, partly because you know everything that had been scheduled and all the normal routines are just ripped up. And it's like, what do we do to, to reorganize in the face of this, and 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 partly because I feel, oh, I've got this panic that's built up, you know, and and that's natural, it's unavoidable. That given what's happening, I feel like every rug that I've been standing on the last twenty years has gotten pulled out. And you and I, you know, we're we're kind of more of the lucky ones, you know, we're. We have, you know, the family. We we we're not out on the street, you know. And um, so, the the important thing is, life gives you these experiences sometimes, maybe a couple of times, two, three, four times in your entire life. This is one of them. This is where, when you hit these points, and everything sort of crashes up here you have equivalent possibility of either breakdown or breakthrough. Do you have a preference? Breakdown, breakthrough. So let us use these times to break through, you know, to, to grow. We can do it, we can do it. You know, but it takes these basic skills of realizing upstairs is under reconstruction. We've got to get down to the basic connection. We've got to reach out and make the connection to everything and everybody that we love. We can't do this by ourselves. Steve, I think that's a wonderful way to end this. Thank you so much for your input. My, my pleasure, my pleasure. For those of you who'd like to explore Stephen's work, you can look him up at stephengilligan.com. And I just want to thank you again for supporting this. Um, I think what you've said is going to make a, a lot of difference to a lot of people. And sometimes it's just a, a little 5% shift, isn't it? It's just a little tweak to what people are already doing. And, you know, you and I... I think the important thing, Gordon, is kind of that sort of space of meaning that, that you were referencing at the beginning whether we take these these sort of winds and and these strong waves and we move it in one direction or another direction and and to have that capacity we, we've got to feel the currents underneath us and then we say i will make something positive out of this and 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 that's the difference between saying oh woe is me or or this is just a horrible situation Say, I will make something positive out of this. It's possible. Yeah. It's a chance potentially to reinvent ourselves. <laughs> You've often talked about we have yeah. these births and deaths through life. That's right. You have to let go of who you were to become who you are, who you will yeah. be. And that's not an everyday experience. You know, mo we couldn't handle it. You know, I think partly it's why people say, how long is this going to last? Mm. You know, but I'd say, as I said, earlier maybe two three four times in our lives everything that we believed or knew is 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 lost and out of that phoenix comes a new life let's do it yeah let's, let's do, do it. it thank you steve
Thank you so much. Pleasure, Gordon. I appreciate your time. Yeah, pleasure. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye.